Hey, welcome back, VBAdrenaline.com fans. This is Darren, and we are in for another episode of Rising Stars, where we talk with some of the top prospects from around the country that you are going to be hearing a lot more of in, in the years to come. Today, we are joined by one of the top setters in the state of Texas, Maddie Victoriano, and he plays for Skyline and also Centennial High School. And Maddie, thanks for taking time on Labor Day. Oh, thank you for having me. Absolutely. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about your team's resumes. Um, you've been very fortunate to play on you know, really good teams, club-wise, high school-wise. Talk about some of the titles that you've already won as a sophomore in high school. Um, so starting off with the high school season, last year I was able to be named Newcomer of the Year for my district, which also leads into like first team all district. And um, I also pride myself on my academics, so also my like, academic all district. And um, going into my club, I've won. So I used to be on Frisco Flyers, and that was a very successful team. And I was able to win gold 11th year. Uh, 13s year and then we also won a silver 14s year and then when I had made the move this uh, last season I uh, we had won a gold medal again yeah and that that was with uh, Dallas Skyline correct mm -hmm. so talk about playing first of all just the environment um, of playing in those big time tournaments what, what's that atmosphere like what mentality does it take to be successful at that level um, I think you just have to have a level of appreciation for the game and how well, that, like how much time you spent just playing and you just have to trust your instincts and just believe that you can really be there and just fit in. So another thing you've, uh, you've attended two of the USA Volleyball National Training Day program uh, sessions. Mm -hmm. what, what were those like and how have they helped you as a player? Um, definitely intimidating the first, like right off the bat, when you walk in, everyone's like six footers and, um, like you can definitely tell, like when you walk in, like you have to really work hard and just have a presence on the court if you want to stand out. And I think that it really like made an impact on me because it like set me straight and like made me realize what I have to be doing to continue to be at the top of um, my age group and just keeping that level of intensity on the court is just like a very crucial part of playing and I think also not only that coachability is just a crazy important part because those coaches are there for you so you just have to be able to take that criticism like no matter how it comes across and just take the like take what you hear like what you hear from it just take it as like well as you can and just apply it to your game. And that's what was my follow up, my next question, because what I noticed and I told you off camera, this is a compliment. One thing I noticed was every time I was by your court um, was that coachability, that eye contact that you're making, that nonverbal, like the nodding of your head, understanding when the coaches were working with you. And that, that didn't happen with every athlete. Is that something that you pride yourself in? Yes, I think that's also just family values. I think that it's a huge part of who I am, just making sure that everyone around me knows like how respectful I am of uh, how what what they have to say. And just um, especially because last year was my second year setting, but it's really my first year really training that hard. So I'm just really grateful that everyone was there to uh, give me that chance and proving myself and just making that switch in position. And so how has that been? Because you play at an extremely high level in the, the most talent rich state in the country of Texas. How has that been learning to play that setting position year one, but yet playing at such a high level? I think it really just helped me because I was able to play the outside position and also the DS perspective. And so then I really know like what the other side is thinking and just how to engage that and like where I set the hitters where they where I tell them to hit and also just playing defense is uh really easy after like it gets a lot easier after you you already know what the hitters are thinking uh we we talked about demeanor on the court uh off uh tell the fans tell the viewers about your demeanor on the court what do you like are you 
vocal? Are you rah rah? Are you more a thinker out there? What What's your demeanor as a setter on the court? I think that just at this age, everyone's really um, loud and just passionate about the game since we're so young and like this game is still super fresh to us. And I think I like to think that I help keep us like calm and I'll I'll use my voice and be very vocal about like making sure that we stay focused together as a team. And yeah. Um, so let's talk about camps. Uh, again, I've really loved how you articulated this to me earlier, but camps that you attended this off season and you already have a plan going into next year. Let's talk about that. Um, so last year, um, we had added AU just like out of the blue and I hadn't really planned for visiting that many college camps because I'd never had before. Um, but since I had since I had gone to AU and Nationals this past year, I was really only able to go to three local camps, which was um, Baylor, as well TCU, and I had a great time at those camps and just like being able to be back on that campus since like I've been there before um, and playing with those players and talking to those coaches, it definitely helps on the recruiting and it like what I want to see like like where I see myself and everything. But definitely walking into this next year, I have a straightforward end that I'm going to have to sacrifice my own free time that I will be spending at those out-of-state camps. Right. So so you need to make more time so you can attend and get on more campuses. Mm -hmm. uh, also, you talked about uh, the when you made the move to Skyline, talking with the recruiting coordinator and, and, and talk about that process coming up with your plan and how you've kind of followed through uh, with the plan that he gave you. So beginning at 14 year, when I first started setting, I mean, I didn't really do too much for my recruiting because I was, I, I didn't really know what to expect for myself yet, but walking into 15 year, um, I sat down with Jason, our uh, Dallas Skyline recruiting coordinator, and he really just helped me like um, learn how to put myself out there by just making those really short, like one minute and 30 second highlight reels and how that little short video can really make a difference in like being able to express your interests and just knowing that they can hear you and they know who you are. Okay, and, and so does he talk to you? Do, you? do you kind of feel like you have somewhat of a plan heading into the the big year um, they'll be coming up this summer. Do you have, do you feel like your head's on straight with where you want to go and what you need to do to get there? Um, I'm definitely um, on the more open side of where I think I'm going to land for college, but I do have a plan on like whenever I do visit those camps this upcoming summer, like what to look for, like um, on the academic side, I really want it to be highly competitive because I think that for myself um, to keep working as hard as I can, I have to be challenged on not just physically and in the game, but also off the court and academically. Talk about, is there somebody being new to the setter position? Is there a setter that you look up to, maybe college, maybe the Olympic, you know, the national team? Is there somebody that you watch and try and maybe model your game after a little bit? Um, I definitely do look at those high level players, but I also like to think that just like even the younger level players, like um, maybe those are just like a year, two years older than me, like even just Charlotte Glass, just like having that presence on the court and just like knowing that even though she's only a year older, she can like be like play like she's played since like for her whole life. Yeah. So Charlotte Glass, is there anybody else that maybe you've met at training day where you're like, you feel like you've taken some things from their game? Um, I think um, whenever I was younger, I think the first time I ever really wanted to start setting, um, even though I wasn't in the position yet, uh, Jenna Gabriels, when I went to that first Texas camp, <laughs> she just like, even though she's on the shorter end, she still had such a presence on the court and she really led her team well. That is awesome. So how, uh, and we'll end with this, how has your high school season, even though it's, uh, even though it's early, um, how's the high school season started for you? It's been really good actually, because we have a new head coach this year. She used to be our assistant coach, but she, after our head coach had retired, she took 
took that spot and um I think everyone just has a love for her that like we just respect her so much that we're all in it together and we're really 100% focused that is awesome. Well, we thank you so much for your time, especially on a holiday, um, somewhere of a holiday. I'm sure you may have practice coming up here, but <laughs> thanks for taking time. Um, and we appreciate your awesome attitude on the court um, and your coachability. Don't ever change that. Uh, but we look forward to following you and watching what big things you do on and off the court. Okay. Thank you.